Item Number SCP-691 Object Class Euclid Reclassification of safe, pending confirmation from Foundation Intelligence that Special Containment Procedures One instance of SCP-691, SCP-691-0, is to be stored in a safety deposit box within the Foundation Archives at site. Any other instances are to be destroyed following confirmation that they are identical to SCP-691-0. Access is restricted to Dr. and her research assistants. Following incident SCP-691-I-1, second-hand recordings of SCP-691 are prohibited, unless permission is granted from a member of staff with Level 5 clearance. Please see investigation logs for details of the standard experimental procedure with respect to any instance of SCP-691. There are currently 15 identical instances of SCP-691 that are, or have been, under Foundation control. SCP-691 is a plain blue cassette tape on which is printed, Pure Escapism, Limited Edition, one of only 250. One side of the tape contains a short forward by an unknown male, introducing a piece of music. See Addendum SCP-691-A1 for further details. On the opposite side, Aquarela do Brasil, using S. K. Russell's English lyrics, can be heard. This particular version is played by a modern symphony orchestra, with an unidentified lyric tenor providing the vocals. It should be noted that the forward will always be played first, regardless of which side of the tape is entered into a player, and both pieces will always be played from the beginning. The forward is harmless and has yet to be linked to any of the effects of SCP-691, aside from encouraging the listener to turn the tape over. Subjects listening to the musical piece have reported visual, auditory, and tactile hallucinations, along with a sense of relaxation and well-being. However, it is unclear whether this is due to the nature of the hallucinations or if it's one of the tape's cognitive effects. Hallucinations have always been described as benign by listeners, and have not been cited as a direct cause for any psychological trauma. Even though hallucinations vary, they have shown some consistency for repeat listeners. Subjects allowed free access to SCP-691 will eventually become capable of doing little more than listening to the tape repeatedly, in several extreme cases foregoing food and drink to do so. Regular listeners who are denied access will not show traditional withdrawal symptoms. Instead, they will show difficulty in acknowledging visual and oral stimuli. In a few cases, subjects have either refused to or been unable to acknowledge any external stimulus. Addendum SCP-691-A1 Transcript of SCP-691 Forward Hi there. If you're listening to this, then I can assume that life has gotten the better of you. Things didn't work out the way you wanted them to, did they? Sometimes it's bad luck. Sometimes you're the cause of your own ruin. Or maybe it's just that you're going nowhere. I'm not one to judge. Everyone has regrets. It's perfectly normal. You don't have to lie to yourself. But I'm digressing, so I'll get to the point. I got some good news for you, sir or madam. I can offer you a way out. No, 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 it's not suicide. You and I both know you don't have the stomach for that unpleasantness. I'm offering you something so much better. Besides, all you have to do, flip this tape over, close your eyes and relax. Think of somewhere nice. Think of the good times. Think of those things you always wanted to do. Now I can't promise that I can give you these. But what I can promise is this. On the other side of this tape, you will find an escape from your own personal train wreck. Enjoy. Addendum SCP-691-A2 All further study on SCP-691 is to be focused on identifying traits associated with its use as per doctor's instructions. A request has also been made to study the effects of secondhand recordings of SCP-691-0 at various volumes. Approval pending. Foundation Intelligence and a detachment of MTF-Alpha-2 are working to identify 
and retrieve any other instances of SCP-691 that may be available to the general public. Incident SCP-691-I-1 Persons involved Dr. Profile Dr. was a reliable and conscientious Foundation employee. His work on SCP and SCP has been of great use to the Foundation. Testimony from Dr. Wife revealed that Dr. was in substantial financial difficulty around the time of the incident although it is uncertain whether or not this was a contributing factor to SCP-691-I-1. Report May 2000 1325 Dr. enters the cell of Subject D-691-25 and begins SCP-691-IMB-30. May 2000 1331 Dr. Concludes his investigation and D-691-25 is removed from cell for termination. Doctor Reviews dictaphone and transcribes recording. May 2000 1335 May 2000 1403 Security footage shows Doctor Exiting site Gatehouse security reports that Dr. cited a personal errand as his reason for leaving. May 2000 1415 SCP-691-0 is reported missing by site security. Security footage is reviewed, and a retrieval team is scrambled to Dr. home in accordance with Foundation Missing Object Policy. May 2000 1435 Retrieval team finds no trace of Dr. despite a thorough search of his home and the surrounding area. May 2000 1600 Dr. credit card statement shows that he bought a personal cassette player from a secondhand shop in at around this time. June 2000 0930 Doctor is reported as a missing person by his wife. Local police department are authorized to conduct a search under Foundation supervision. Standard cover story December 2000 1722 Doctor body is found near SCP-691-0 is recovered. Responsibility for SCP-691-0 is given the doctor. Afterward, postmortem showed that the probable cause of doctor death was hypothermia, brought about by exposure. The body was found with a personal cassette player containing SCP-691-0. Foundation leaked standard cover story, and the local coroner's court returned a verdict of accidental death as a direct result of this citing Dr. fragile emotional state as an exacerbating factor. Agent report stated that Dr. death was an indirect result of The report did however mention that Agent believed that Dr. life could have been saved if he had less knowledge of Foundation missing object policy, and suggested a review of non-classified information for non-security personnel. All three of Dr. research assistants have since been subjected to full psychological evaluations and have been transferred to projects where cognitohazards and perceptohazards are not involved. SCP-691 Investigation Logs Standard procedure for investigations involving SCP-691 is as follows. Subjects allowed free access to SCP-691-0 are to be provided with a soundproof fully furnished cell. Foundation staff entering testing cell are to wear ear defenders. Subjects listening to SCP-691-0 under a member of staff supervision are to do so through headphones. All prompts from Foundation staff should be nonverbal. NB Following incident SCP-691-I-1, Foundation staff must wear ear protection 
when any instance of SCP-691 is being played, regardless of the circumstances. Sound recording equipment must not be operated whilst any instance of SCP-691 is playing, and only written accounts from test subjects are permitted. SCP-691-IMV-1 Date Time 10.25 Subject D-691-1 Procedure Standard experimental procedure followed. D-1 was to listen to both sides of SCP-691 in their entirety, and was to give a verbal account of their experience. Report D-1 reports nothing unusual whilst listening to SCP-691-0's board. Whilst listening to the reverse of SCP-691-0, D-1 describes how the colors of the room have become more vivid, and likens Dr. to, quote, something like out of a cartoon, unquote. D-1 reports a feeling of complete peace. Subject appeared to take great pleasure in how Dr. was always smiling, although Dr reports that this was not the case. D-1 requested further access to SCP-691. Request was denied. Classified. O5 clearance required. SCP-691-IMB-10 Date Time 0951 Subject D-691-7 Procedure Standard experimental procedure was followed. D-7 was allowed free, undisturbed access to SCP-691-0. D-7 was asked to record his experiences via a written journal. Report In its first entry, D-7 describes green pastures and a cool breeze. This is followed by a rambling discourse on its feelings of his, quote, newfound freedom, unquote. The second, third, and fourth entries continue in a similar vein, describing the sights and sounds of what appears to be rural Switzerland and involving several more asides on various subjects, including freedom, atonement, and forgiveness, each entry being of deteriorating quality. The fifth entry was illegible, and was D-7's last. Dr. requested that SCP-691-IMB-10 be seized at 1427 on citing that no more useful information could be yielded. Classified. O5 clearance required. SCP-691-IMB-15 Date Time 10 hundred hours Subject D-691-12 Procedure Standard experimental procedure was followed. D-12 would allow full access to SCP-691-0 for 72 hours. After this period, D-12 was denied access to SCP-691-0. Daily interviews were conducted. Report D-12's reaction to SCP-691-0 was similar to those of D-Class personnel in previous investigations. Dr. hypothesized that D-12's reaction to deprivation of SCP-691-0 would lead to textbook withdrawal symptoms. Instead, Dr. encountered considerable difficulty when interviewing the subject. D-12 was not responsive to Dr. questions. Other than requests for access to SCP-691-0, D-12 was uncommunicative. An NMRI scan of D-12's brain showed minimal response to visual, oral, and physical stimuli. An MRI scan taken whilst D-12 would listen to SCP-691-0 showed signals consistent with external stimuli, along with a strong reaction originating from the nucleus accumbens. Classified. O5 clearance required. SCP-691-IMB-30 Date Time 13.25 Subject D-691-25 Procedure. Standard experimental procedure followed. Doctor requested a D-Class subject with a generally high quality of life, a background free of alcohol and drug abuse, and lacking traits generally associated with an addictive personality. 
Subject D-691-25 was acquired via and subjected to a series of psychological tests and a precursory interview to gauge mental well-being and to confirm background. Subject was to listen to SCP-691-0 and was to give a verbal account of their experience. Report. No formal report compiled. Transcript of D-691-25's account is as follows. Translated from Begin recording Begin recording Okay, I hear a man speaking. I can't understand what he's saying. Sounds like English. He's finished now. Do you want me to… Okay, doing it. There. I hear music. I don't recognize the tune, but… Can you see this? It's a city. It's how I imagined… Would be. Well, until those border security people caught us. Elaborate? You mean you can't see it? It's beautiful. Shining skyscrapers. Everything's just gleaming. This is the… My brother told me about in his letter. This isn't like a city back in my country, Doctor. You'll have to see this to believe it. I could stay in a place like this for the rest of my life. Subject begins to hum, ignoring Dr. Prompts. Tape ends. Again, I want to go back there again. No, I don't want another medical exam. I want that money you promised me, and I want that tape. Recording ends.